Hello and welcome to episode 99 of the Crochet Cakes podcast. In today's podcast, not only are we going to talk about previous makes, part three of my garment tour, but we are going to talk a little bit about behind the reason behind why I made these things. So stay tuned. Hello, how are you doing today? It is lovely to be sitting here and chatting with you. It's a, uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's been a bit of a, it's been a bit of a week, or the bit, a bit of two months maybe. I don't even know where to start. Maybe by today's date, it is Thursday. It is Thursday, February, the, the date escapes me, but it is Thursday and we are still in February. Um, so I hope that you have been doing well and that you've been keeping sane and positive, however, you are able to do so. Um, I know that, you know, I think as earthly beings, we haven't processed everything that's been happening so far, and we might feel unjustified in, in doing it because we might think, well, there are people that are worse than us. And yes, well, if we all threw our problems out into the street, I'm pretty sure we'd pick our own ones back up. That doesn't negate how we feel about what's going on in our lives and how just pushing it to the back burner and act, not actually processing, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really help us. But on that heavy note, oof, that is not why you tuned in to this podcast, was it? No, 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 no. This is a crochet podcast, so you tuned in to hear about crochet. And I, as I said, I do have crochet-related things to talk about to you today. We're continuing with part three of our garment tour, and today I have chosen skirts and dresses because I am legitimately running away from showing you my short sleeve garments. I, I have too many. <laughs> I have way too many. But not only do I want to walk you through these pieces that I've crocheted or designed, but I also want to walk you through the reason behind why I chose them. I think that is interesting, especially if you are a budding designer, finding out the reasons why people choose your designs or don't choose your designs. That's, that's good feedback, I think. So yeah, let's chat in the comments below. Please don't forget that. Otherwise, it's just me talking to my camera with my dog judging me, and uh, I, I'd rather... I'd rather have an actual conversation with you guys. So what can I share with you? Let's start with what I am wearing, not the top, because I am not wearing anything that I've crocheted. In fact, this is an extremely old sweater that I absolutely love and I've kept since 2012. So yeah, this sweater is almost 10 years old and it's doing great. It's, uh, I think it was from Urban Outfitters, I got it in one of those super, super, super winter sales that they do. So yeah, it's almost 10 years old and I love it. Um, I am actually though wearing some crochet and this is a bracelet. I'm holding it up to the screen now. It is a broomstick lace cuff with some vintage buttons that my mom made for me. And um, I don't usually wear it because I'm actually saving it to wear with like blush pearl sets whenever I get them because it's a very blush coppery color, color that I absolutely love. And I'm also wearing a prototype of a crocheted ring that mom made. Um, there is a tutorial for this. I'm holding it up to the screen so you can see it's a crocheted flower and inside there's a bead on it. And I say this is a prototype because I don't know if the camera picked it up, but where the ring is, it's a glued on so the glue is actually um, kind of eating away a little bit at the crochet and the ring. So that is crochet items I have not made, but I am wearing. And it's also just a little tidbit of how you can wear crochet in warmer weather. Although today is a little bit cool. It's going to be in the 70s in Florida, and I can wear a sweater in the 70s as long as I'm not wearing anything too hot under it. So, yay! Uh, but what I am wearing that I made that is part of today's garment tour is a skirt. I am wearing a crocheted skirt. I'll include a picture here because even if I stand up, you won't be able to see it. I tried it. I did a little um, podcast kind of, is my, are my settings correct thing before I started and I s stood up anyway. Inserting picture here, like I said, and this is my peach fuzz crochet skirt. Now, the reason I made this skirt was because I, at the time I was receiving 
knit crate yarn and one of their crates they included this beautiful these beautiful hanks of Vitalana Aloft yarn and that is a cotton alpaca blend and it is chain plied it's it's the absolute loveliest thing I'm sorry I keep looking at my yarn stash because I'm pretty sure I had about 10 grams left over of this yarn but I don't want to stop recording and show it so we'll just continue looking at the pretty pictures um, as you can see by the pictures the yarn is in a peachy color and it's very tonal so you can have light shades of peaches and darker splotches of peach colors and it is really soft and absolutely wonderful to wear even in the Florida heat it is a DK weight cotton alpaca and it just it just feels wonderful and one of the main reasons I love it is because it's a chain plied yarn so it shows up crochet stitches beautifully just the texture and the way they it builds up it's just absolutely stunning so I received this yarn, right? And for those of you that aren't familiar with Knit Crate, Knit Crate is a yarn subscription box. You get a monthly box of goodies that you get to choose which crate you get. I believe they're doing three different types of crates. You know, they va vary in price ranges and such. Uh, but you can go to the website by clicking the link below uh, in this video, the description box, and you can check out what they do, what they offer. But one of the perks is that if you you know pay for your monthly subscription box and I think you can do it month to month or you can just do it um, you know six months to a year is that you get the membership central discount so even if you're not a Knit Crate member you can purchase the, their yarn but you purchase it at the full price if you are already subscribed to their boxes you purchase their yarn at a discounted price and in addition to that at the end of each month you get what they call stash down and that is about approximately 65% off the yarn in their membership central. So it's a great thing to take advantage of. And when I received my Knit Crate box, I used to do that. I would take advantage every now and then of that stash down. And that's how I purchased an extra hank of this yarn. So with 300 grams, I made a size medium A-line skirt. And the reason I chose the A-line skirt was because I had already made a previous crochet skirt that I really enjoyed that had this A-line shape, but I had made it in cotton, so I wanted to see how different the drape would be in this DK weight cotton alpaca blend and how different the stitch definitions would be. So basically, I was just exploring how different yarns can make the same shape look different. And I have to say I'm very happy with the results. This is a free pattern on my blog. If you're interested, it's warmer. Since I'd already referenced a little bit about the skirt and the reason why I decided to make this one, let me show you the OG A-line skirt. And by OG, I mean original. And it's here. This um, is my attempt at imitating Sandra's of Cherry Heart, her granny square skirt which is not a granny square skirt anymore i think she made it into a cowl or some such thing she talked about it in one of her recent or maybe maybe it was 2020 podcast it wasn't 2021 um so i had seen her crochet this granny square skirt and i immediately knew i needed one and so i went online and i looked up patterns and this is a drops gardener studio pattern and what it is it is a plain a-line skirt at the top and at the bottom we have a uh, granny square borders i chose to do my skirt in cotton because uh that i made this when i lived in puerto rico and uh you don't get anything below 65 degrees in puerto rico and 65 degrees is usually like january february so yeah cotton was where it was at for me and in this skirt you'll notice there's a bit, little bit of a band there's an elastic there that wasn't in the original design the original design just had you put buttons and for closures which would have been fine if the skirt had been tight the skirt was way too loose on me at the time, so uh, what mom decided was, since I had actually made it pretty long, she folded over a piece of elastic that she sewed, and then she just sewed it with a whip stitch very delicately. My mom's whip stitching has always been very delicate. Now, 
The downside to putting elastic on a crochet skirt after you've made it, or a sewn skirt, is there's not a lot of stretch, you see that? There's enough give to fit comfortably around your waist, but not to stretch the elastic and push it up your thighs. So I tend to wear this skirt like a dress, you know, push it, pull it over my head and shimmy it down um, to my waist. Unfortunately, it doesn't fit anymore. I've gained quite a few pounds and it's very tight. Sometimes I will squish myself into this skirt though. And also one final skirt that I had made and this was also inspired completely by something Emily of Make E was doing and she was doing pinafore dresses for her daughters, I think, um, out of the velvet yarn. And I did have I believe it was three balls of this burnout velvet and it is a beautiful emerald green and I just, I love the texture of it. And I wanted a Christmas skirt so I made this very last minute in December of 2018. Yes, yes December of 2018. So I did this following, you know, the same method, crochet a band and then sew a piece of elastic and seam it, seam your crochet in here. Now the reason I'm not particularly fond of this skirt, even though I love the velvet, is that this waistband, this huge, huge waistband, is not very flattering on me, and I, I want to wear it. So I'm actually going to break this up, and I'm going to make a cushion out of it to go on our couch for Christmas. So I have a head start on that, and I don't know when it'll happen, honestly, but it's just so pretty and soft and fluffy that I, I think a cushion would be a great use of this velvet yarn as well. Um, just to put it aside and then I don't know what I'll do with the elastic. Maybe I'll, I'll figure something out. Okay. So those are the three skirts that I've crocheted and kind of the reasons behind why I crochet them. So some were inspired by what other people um, created and I did a take on it, especially because there was no pattern, like Sandra of Cherry Heart, she didn't write up a pattern for her granny square skirt, and Emily of Make E kind of uh, talked you through how she made her A-line skirt, but it was, I thought it was, that was a bit too short for me. And moving on now to some dresses, I have here one that you will remember me working on a lot, and it is the Secret Garden dress by Cassie Ward. This is a crocheted dress, all granny squares, and I chose bright, lovely colors. So we've got oranges, blues, lemon yellows, kind of um, tealy greens, and lime green, all sewn together with a gray yarn. All of this yarn is the same brand. It is Lolly by Conway and Bliss. Unfortunately, this yarn was discontinued, and I don't know why. It crochets up so beautifully. It does make for a very heavy dress, though, as in the weight of this is, is, is very funny. I did write a, write a very detailed blog post on this dress, so if you want to check that out for uh, yarn usage and grammage and all that, <laughs> feel free, please, to check it out. And one of the reasons I chose this dress was, I don't know, I just saw the picture, I think it was issue 101 of Inside Crochet, I saw a picture of the dress and I just, I had to have it. I had to have it, there was nothing else. Um, it uses the sunburst granny square pattern and it is joined as you go, so the final round of the sunburst granny square you do it in your main color. Now, of course, because I chose a completely different yarn to the yarn recommended in the pattern, which I believe is acrylic, I had to do adjustments for um, yarn quantities that I was purchasing and things like that. And I did, I believe I, I made it longer at the bottom because I thought it was gonna be too short, but it does. It does stretch, so it fits really nicely with this added um, border. I think the pattern had you do just one or two borders and I decided to do five rounds of it. And the last round I did it in uh, orange color to just kind of tie the colors in. In fact, I could have probably done one row in every color, but you know, hindsight. I will confess something. If you look on the inside of this dress, 
those are ends. I use this dress without weaving in the ends. I honestly, I couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to do it. Every once in a while, I'll sit down and I will crochet over some ends or whip some ends in whatever. The point is that when I made this dress, I, I was trying to really save my yarn and I considered leaving long tails of yarn to weave in a waste. So, yeah. And the last and final crocheted garment piece that I have to share with you today is a design. And I do want to talk about a little bit about this. Now, I shared this dress in last week's, on Fridays we were crochet post. Okay, but we were talking about the dress that I designed. So, and I shared with you a little recap on last week's, on Fridays we were crochet Instagram post. And this is the bubble shift dress. Now this dress was inspired by my love of the 1960s shift dress. So that's one of the reasons why I decided to design it. It's um, a style that I find really flattering and there are different ways of doing it. You see shift dresses that are kind of um, tighter and form-fitting and you see other shift dresses that are form-fitting in some places but then not in others and I, I just I love the versatility of it. Now, let me show you the dress and pictures of it and why I designed it. So, I decided to design this dress because one of the things that I often, well, you know, one of the things that we do as designers is we design in a standard size. That is what the Craft Yarn Council recommends, that is what's industry accepted, these standard sizes. So you'll usually get, you know, extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, and you'll get a design to fit that mold. But we don't all fit a mold. And I talked about this in last week's Instagram post. Um, I am in smaller, extra small at the top, depending what the pattern was designed, you know, which, how many inches, how much possibilities it has and that. And I'm a medium waist and medium or large at the hips. I am a hippie kind of girl. And I also have a long torso and I have long legs and I have long arms. So things that are supposed to be long sleeve on some people are bracelets length or three quarter sleeves on me. So I tend to adapt a lot of my designs. I, I generally do not follow a design, whether I've made it myself or I purchased it from somebody else. I don't generally follow it 100% because I know my body and I know how I will wear a style more often. And so with this crochet shift dress pattern, what I wanted to share with you was how you could adapt a pattern to fit you. Um, well, probably won't notice. But in Friday's post, I told you that when I made this, I made a medium all throughout the waist even, and then I decreased to an extra small to fit my bust. I am part of the itty bitty titty committee, and I, I like to wear things that will showcase my body to its advantage. So that is the second, and to me, the most important reason of why I decided to crochet this dress. Okay, so that is it for finished past crochet wearables, and while I do have a finished garment to that I could potentially share with you, I am going to save it for my next episode because next episode will be episode 100 and it will go live on the day of my birthday, which is the 12th of March. So I thought it would be great if uh, we would have a little new pattern reveal because it is something that I designed and I wanted to share it with you that way. So. If nothing changes, that's what's going to happen. That pattern is going to go live the 12th of March, and I will be sharing it with you in the podcast as well. So, um, I'm excited. Can you tell that I love this new finished item? Because <sighs> I do. I do. Now, because I don't want to just keep teasing you about this finished item and the little special things I have planned for episode 100 of the Koresha Cakes podcast, which is in two weeks time, March 12th. Let's share with you what I do have finished and what I am working 
on as well. So let's start with finished items. I have finished a tea cozy and unfortunately, because I'm a little bit of a dummy dumb, I didn't bring a teapot to share it with you. So I, I will attempt to hold it in a flattering light. So this is my, no, that just looks weird. Let me go get a tea, tea, tea pot. The whole neighborhood and its mother decided to mow lawn today, just today, just to, just to make this impossible. Anyway, I was talking about a finished item and it is this, now it looks better and more acceptable. This is a finished tea cozy and I don't think, unless you follow me on Instagram, you didn't even see this process. Now, it's a little bit big for my, tea cup, uh, my teapot. Um, I could use a taller teapot, so I will be hunting for that soon. But this is a beautiful, beautiful pattern from the Romantic Crochet Book by Emma S. Scott. And I'm holding the teapot close to the screen so you can see and appreciate the ruffles. This is the back side, and I'll tell you why it's the back side because this shell and this shell here are missing some sparkle. Uh, I ran out of sparkle yarn. But all the front here has all the sparkle. And I decided to make it two-toned because I was using stash. So I am super happy with how this lovely teapot turned out. This is the first time I've ever made a teapot cozy, ever, in my 10 years crocheting. I am serious, it's the first time I've ever made a teapot cozy. And I love it. I really do love it. This is the Teapot Cozy, and it is part of the Romantic Crochet Book by Emma Escott, who is Lulu Loves underscore UK on Instagram, and she is the host of the Lulu Loves Crochet Podcast. I don't know if she calls it Lulu Loves Crochet Podcast or just Lulu Loves Podcast. Uh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> But yes, I'll of course include the links of where you can um, see her YouTube channel down below. So this is the original teapot and as I said, it's part of this book. Now if you notice, mine is done in two colors. Um, it uses DK weight cotton wool blend yarn. It is Shipjiz. Shipjiz Hepjiz Merino Soft. So it is a cotton merino wool blend, which you know, if you're trying to keep your tea warm, that's super important. Unfortunately, I did not have that in my stash. What I did have in my stash was this top bronzy gold color. This is um, Classic Elite Yarns Song, their song base. I don't know if it's discontinued or just this color is discontinued. It is a really nice yarn. I would definitely use it to make a garment. It is DK weight, as I said and it is a cotton wool blend. And I just found an end that wasn't woven in, of course. Um, so I only had 50 grams of that. So I decided to use it for the top. So it kind of symbolized a flower, you know, how some flowers, you know, they have all the color at the top and then the stems down. So that was my reasoning behind it. And the other thick yarn I use is actually a 100% cotton yarn. It is Rowan Tetra Cotton. And I got it years ago, the first time I went to EYF at a John Lewis sale. So it cost one pound, which at the time of the exchange rate would have been about $1.25, $1.50 for a 50 gram ball. So I used that Tetra Cotton to make the base because if you peek under the ruffles, there is a base there. So for that base, I used Tetra Cotton and then I also used it for the rest. So altogether, I used 125, 130 grams of yarn to make this tea cozy. And I am just giving you the weight of the two main colors of yarn because I also decided to um, hold the Tetra Cotton together with an Aunt Lydia my memory card complained that it was full. Okay, so as I was saying, I held the Tetra Cotton together with an Aunt Lydia's Crochet 10 thread, and that was to make it more of a decayer weight in comparison to the top song um, yarn. Because 
I don't know if how well you can tell, but this ruffle here is a lot thinner than the ones where I held the Aunt Lydia's together with the Tetra Cotton and the Song of Classic Elite Yarns. So I'm very happy with it. I love the colors. It turned out to be very fall-like. Um, in fact, you kind of tie it together to clothes, and I was thinking of making little tiny acorns so I could hang off of that closing mechanism. <laughs> Right, so that is the pattern for the Romantic Crochet book. And I had actually received this book um, right after I finished filming the previous podcast, but it didn't make it into the podcast because I was already almost through the editing. Now, I don't know how how much you've seen this book on Instagram because there was a crochet book tour but I primarily bought it because I couldn't get that teapot cozy out of my head and it was because Emma she showed a plain color one that she was making with I believe it was the parchment colorway maybe it wasn't it was a light gray colorway and she was holding it together with some metallic champagne thread and it was just beautiful and I, and I had to have it and that might sound a bit ridiculous to you paying $20 um, for a crochet book for just one pattern it is kind of ridiculous but it's not just one pattern I did go check out the hashtag for this book as well as a podcast she made exclusively about this book so I could see all the patterns that were available to me and what patterns I would be most interested in making so I'm just sharing with you, holding it up to share you some of the patterns that are included. And there are a total of one, two, three, four patterns that I really like in this book. And by like, I mean that they fit my style. I would use them, I would wear them, I would decorate my home with. So one of them is this pillow. This is another huge favorite. When I saw this, I, I knew I had to have it as well. And it's a lovely pillow meant to resemble kind of plants in a window, which I think it really does. And another one is this lacy shrug. It's a beautiful cocoon style shrug and the photography in this book is just absolutely lovely. So sometimes I just sit and stare at all the pictures and ah. So that's already two, three, three patterns in total. And then, of course, she has her Peter Pan collars. I also want to make. I love her Peter Pan collars. And then there is this lovely top here as well. It's got some, incorporates some granny squares in there for some granny square love. And I think that would look really gorgeous on top of like a plain simple dress. And then we have a hot water bottle cozy, which I want to own. So there are a total of one, two, three four, five, six, six, you know, in fact, I probably will make almost all of the patterns in this book, but I was originally very attracted to six, or actually five of them, and then as I opened it and saw the pictures and read their stories, I, I was like, yeah, I need almost all of you in my life. My memory card was full again, so to prevent this problem, I have located my heavy duty memory card and I've inserted that in the camera. So I was talking you through this book. So if um, I count the original patterns I was attracted to, that was five of them divided by the $20 that the book cost me, 20 US dollars that the book cost me, well, that is a total of four dollars a pattern which is um a much more reduced fee than you would normally pay for an individual crochet pattern those sell at about six pounds depending on what uh, the designer chooses and the complexity of the pattern so let's say each of these patterns would have been six pounds six to seven pounds sold individually so that would be about uh, eight, ten US dollars. So it was definitely good bang for your buck. And not only that, it's such a beautifully crafted book. I want to make another tea cozy as well, obviously. But just the the styling of everything, how it's showcased in places you would use it, and it's just 
it's just beautiful. I actually love the colors in this shawl and I kind of want to make a garment inspired by those colors. They're beautiful. And also one of my favorite pictures in the entire book is this one because look at those boots. They're gorgeous. And that's the drawstring bag pattern. A lot of people chose to make the drawstring bag pattern, but to be honest, I don't think I would use it. So that's why I wouldn't make it. But having said that, I did think if you kind of play with the pattern a little bit, you could use it as a jar cozy. And then, yeah, you could use it to decorate your jars. Because that's what a jar cozy is, Clarissa Beth. Oy. But everything here has charts as well, so if you work more from charts, you can have that. And it's really a lovely, lovely book. And I know she did the photography herself because she mentioned that, and she was very shy about it. My second favorite picture. Who doesn't love this scene? It's gorgeous. So that is enough waffling on about the romantic crochet book, but I just, I really enjoyed this book and like I said it's not just for the pattern it's the photography the way everything was laid out and I want to make another tea cozy and I also want to thrift for a teapot that will fit this tea cozy oh one thing I did forget to mention I'm a loose crocheter so I went down to a 3.75 millimeter crochet hook and that's what I used all throughout the pattern and I got gauge with it too because I measured um, the gauge of the rectangle you start with and I met gauge so that was fun and exciting as well god what else did I work on well I also started um, this new project living in my lovely felted bag this is a one-of-a-kind uh, I didn't sell this on the shop and so I kept it for myself long time ago. Anyway, I ventured into the world of crochet thread because of Emma Escott. So if you watch her podcast, you'll know or see or maybe remember that she has a kind of cork board behind her full of doilies and samples. And I think it just looks absolutely adorable. And it's a good way of decorating with your swatches you know sometimes we might think swatches are useless quote unquote you know useless um so i decided i needed a crochet doily wall as well and i do have kind of a pegboard that i found at a thrift store i've covered it with fabric and I didn't bring it here to show you but it's long but it's not too tall it's very long or i guess depending which way you put it it could be long but not wide and I've done several doilies here, uh, some from vintage stitch patterns. So this one, no, this one is not. This one's from a crochet exclamation point magazine, old one. This one is from a vintage stitch dictionary. And this one, I did it imitating a lovely coaster that a lovely viewer of this podcast sent to me a long time ago. I believe uh, your name was Patty correct me if I'm wrong, um, but she sent that and I just loved it so much I imitated what she did. I don't know if it was an original design or not, but I kind of sketched it out from that. And then this one here that's a long strip of squares, it's from Sheru Knitting and it's a YouTube channel that has a lot of beautiful, wonderful tutorials. Um, so I made those and I'm just using Aunt Lydia's 10 in a color off-white, I guess. And uh, this, which I think is wasabi. Yes, wasabi. This lovely spring green is wasabi. And I am using a 1.75 millimeter crochet hook because that is the smallest crochet hook I own. However, I am pretty sure I should be using a one just to get a nice gauge. I like tight gauge. So I'm slowly working um, on that. And the plan is to cover the um the little wall decor in doilies and if you've no idea what i'm talking about there are some wonderful pictures out there on the googles 
so Google's it. And the other acquisition that I got, you know, other than this book, was that Catherine of Crafter New Treats, in her vlogs, she uh, every once in a while posts up lonely onlys and you purchase them by sending her an email and claiming the yarn. And this is Mariushka the Firebird and it is a gorgeous yellowy, light yellow base with beautiful, beautiful speckles of burnt orange, orange, fuchsia, blue, green, brown. It's just beautiful and this is in her Corydell Polworth wool base. It is a sock yarn so it is fingering weight. It brings 100 grams, 400 meters and I am going to be designing a pair of socks. Yes, I am. I'm just going to stash hunt for some contrasting colors because I'm thinking of doing something special with my next sock design. So that was this, but not only did she send what I paid for, she very, very kindly offered a free uh, hank of yarn for a giveaway and I agreed to it immediately because I am planning a giveaway for my birthday for episode 100 and I chose this colorway for you guys because I absolutely love the name. I'm not going to take it out of the yarn, but it is kind of that dusty pink color with a bit of, I would say, mauve undertones and it is very lightly speckled with greens, blues, pinks, purples, so it is beautiful and delicate. It is 100 grams, it's in her fingering weight base as well, and this is the Silk Bellini color. Oh, guys, I do apologize. This is in her very special 75% super fine merino, 25% mulberry silk. I am sorry. I have dishonored this hank of yarn. This is super special. So I'm going to be putting a giveaway together based on this. I'm going to hunt through my fabric stash and see what I have that can kind of coordinate with this yarn, maybe make a project bag and send it on its way to the person who receives it in the giveaway that I will be hosting in episode 100. Um, in terms of other stuff I've been doing, I'll probably share that with you next time because I think this episode has run a bit amok. You know, I, I, it's been longer than I was expecting to make it, but I did start a new design. I have been knitting. I've been called to knit and you know what? Forget it. I'm going to share that with you because I need to share this with you. So I was called to the knitting world. I will not deny it. I've been meaning to make a second version of the As If Tea for some time now. So I did start that and I'll just quickly walk you through it. Um, and it's not for me, actually, it's a version for my sister and I'm using DK weight yarn just as I used the first time, but this DK weight yarn was a true DK weight, not a light worsted. So I am holding it together with um, some lace weight kind of metallic thread that I had and also mistakenly some fingering weight that I had. So kind of like the fingering weight plus the DK weight made a worsted or chunky. So that's a bit heavy, but I figured bottom heavy is not such a bad thing. I am using four millimeter needles, same as last time, and I'm using the amazing Knit Picks four square needles. Highly recommend. They are very slick wooden needles and it's not that they make me faster because I don't think anything except continental knitting would make me a faster knitter, but I can't get the hang of continental knitting. And it's leaving in my always throw spilled salt over your left shoulder bag, which um, I made ages ago. So I was called to that, the knitting world, because I really wanted to start that. But the reality is that I was also trying to keep myself from purchasing a yarn pattern that I am crushing on until I had decided what yarn I was going to use for and it had to be stash yarn. So I am crushing heavily on the Lawrenson sweater by Lily Kate Makes and if you don't know 
Lily Kate Makes is a knitting designer. She also does crochet, she crochets, and right now she's coming out with a design that combines both knitting and crochet, which I think is marvelous because there should always be a combination. They both have their strong points. Maybe not always be a combination, but you know, it should be appreciated that they can work well together. That's what I meant. So she, um, yeah, where was I going with this? Lily Kate Makes, her designs are so simple and elegant and her sleeves are dramatic and, and I needed it in my life. But I told myself, you cannot purchase this pattern until you decide what stash yarn you are using to make it. So figure that out, figure how you can combine to get stash yarn to make this lovely sweater, and then you can purchase the sweater. I believe I've decided on yarn, so I will be purchasing this sweater as a birthday treat for myself. So that, um, try to read my notes and see. Oh, I do have notes on other things I've been doing. I've been emailing, <laughs> you know, uh, because I've noticed that a lot of people are taking breaks. A lot of my friends are taking breaks from social media accounts and things like that. And since the USPS system is a little bit slower than normal, I figured an email gets there faster than a typed letter. And emails can also be exciting when you get emails about, um, you know, from friends and things that aren't promotions or bills. I've also been watching costume YouTube channels, you know, like historical costuming, things like that. And, you know, just generally been trying not to give in to the negative negativity that is constantly living in my brain. And I am sure I'm not the only one. I know I'm not the only one because it's just, it's been a very hard 14 months. Anyway, that is enough depressing talk. I don't want to end this on a depressing talk. So talking about some good things to look forward to. As I said, episode 100 will be my birthday. And I will be hosting a giveaway just to say thank you and yeah, celebrating my birthday. What can I say? Birthday, birthday, birthday. How many times can I say birthday? Anyway, um, thank you so much for watching this podcast. If you like it, click the like button. If you want to subscribe, then please do so. Um, don't forget to comment. If you are here for Spanish content that has moved, El contenido de español se ha mudado a otro canal, which will be linked also down below. And yeah, just let's let's chat, you guys. If you don't follow me on Instagram, crochet cakes. I'm crochet cakes everywhere. Pinterest, Instagram, here on YouTube, trying my website. My website's also crochet cakes. And just thank you for spending some time with me this week. Thank you for pressing that watch button and just thank you for interacting and just for, you know, being here and crafting with me. Thank you. And above all else, I want to wish you uh, very happy times ahead and happy crafting, guys.